everyone. This is Ranger Rob, and welcome to the Ranger Rob Country Living Podcast. And I'm uh, hosted here uh, with uh, Dale Wiley. And uh, this is the first time I actually turned on the screen, and he was there at the, <laughs> right off the bat. But before we get started, I need to make sure and let you guys know that you can find the Ranger Rob Country Living Podcast on Spreaker and iHeartRadio and all Spotify and a whole bunch of other places. Uh, in the description below, you can find the links to all that. And uh, we're uh, lo uh, me and um, Dale both are located on Crooked River Ranch, Oregon. And so uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, things that we have in common. So we've been working together and it's been a lot of fun. And so uh, Dale, Dale's brought up some really good stuff. But how you doing, Dale? I'm doing good, Ranger Rob. How are you today? <laughs> Super. I like your flag back there. So, uh, uh, thank now, you. That particular flag. Tell me. Tell me what history is behind it. Well, that's the Betsy Ross flag. That's the 13 original colonies uh, and the original flag that Betsy Ross sewed just prior to the American Revolution in 1776. So, um, you know, take it for what it's worth. It's been flying on. Uh, my flagpole, I pulled it down last night. It's a little bit windy, and I thought I'm going to hang this thing up here. Um, pretty much yeah. the only flag my family's been flying. So, <laughs> Well, you know, if all these uh, states merge together that want to merge together, Idaho, Oregon, all that, we could get down to 13 again. <laughs> we, we could. And that, you know, I mean, that's the 11 Western states thing type of thing. I don't know if the, we, don't, we don't want all of them because or parts of them or something like that. But yeah. Um, yeah, there's there's a there was a lot of change in our country about that time that was dramatically needed, and so that's just kind of a reminder to the people of what was and what needs to be, um, you know, some good solid change, and um, just one small man's way of putting it up here on a flagpole that hardly anybody can see, but you know, I see it. So, <laughs> well, you know, it's a uh... The sunset never goes down over in my place behind me. It's, you know, we have this beautiful sunset 24 7 here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that's great. Right over your left shoulder there, you know, especially yeah. in this low time of light. I mean, what are we losing? A minute, a minute, minute and a half, two minutes a day of I light know. right now? I, I know, it's terrible. My, chick, mean, my are chickens are so messed up. <laughs> oh, my, yeah, you know, and. Or they they do pretty good. They keep going, but I mean me, I'm you know, I'm not a big fan of the winter darkness and everything, and and all I've learned to deal with it and all. But I mean, we got some low shadows this time of the year, and uh, you know today pretty nice. And I popped outside there to the shop and everything to work and in and out there for a couple hours, and you know take the high time of the day, ten o'clock to two o'clock, and after that she gets cold and dark again. Yeah. But, um, well, what do we got? We got another. 12 days or so until the sunlight goes the other way. Yeah, I actually, I'm, I'm a birthday boy of uh, December 21st, so that's always the cusp of when things nice. start switching. So it's always, I don't know why December 21st, it was supposed to be the end of the world at one time too, but right. that didn't happen. <laughs> but yeah, on the 21st, it starts reversing. So that's that's what I celebrate on my birthday. I just, um, before I, I get started, oh, go ahead. No, winter solstice is one of my favorite days of the year. I mean, we're turning around <laughs> to light and everything, and that means, you know, two or three weeks after that, you're going to see growth in plants and things start to change. So that's always a good time. Yeah. Well, before we get started, I was just talking to you, uh, you and showing you that uh, if people haven't been paying attention to uh, earthquakes, um, now I like to watch the earthquakes. We're just talking about that and stuff, but there is a concerning thing going on may mean nothing at all um but let me bring it in a little bit um i gotta do two screens at the same time here but this is off the oregon coast and we for the last two days have been getting um, a big uh, spread of uh earthquakes on the fault out here uh, i think that's the san juan Swal fault and then there's the cascadia anyway so it's not really hitting the cascadia because the fault um and the outside here goes side to side where the one with Cascadia, one goes under the other. Um, however, this could stimulate problems on the other fault. Anyway, but um, just for a heads up for people who are kind of interested, in, I got to figure out where my mouse is. <laughs> I got two, two screens here. 
let me blow it up here, but we're talking like 25 to 50 earthquakes, uh, what they call a swarm going on. And some of these earthquakes are up between right um, off to the side. You can see what the last one was, was 3.8. And just before that, not too long ago, was uh, 5.2. They're all really shallow. Sure. And I'm not really making any point or any scare or any fear thing about what, what we're seeing here. Come on, clear up. Oh, did I blow it up too much? Yeah, I did. Um, yeah. But it, it does kind of uh, remind you that we're not in, in, in control of the world all the time. <laughs> the world, the, the earth has its own plans. And so whatever no, that good. plan I, is. It, it's going to do it. I mean, hell, let's just throw a natural disaster into this whole mess that we're in right now and see how that yeah. makes things for everybody, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Um, but anyway, let me get that off the screen. And uh, anyway, I just thought people might find that interested. Uh, that's a free service on the internet if you want. It's a USGS. Uh, if you want to see what kind of earthquakes are going on and kind of monitor the fire, ring of fire and stuff, it's pretty interesting um, if you like that kind of stuff. Anyway, but it's not the end of the world, but it does give you a, a reality of what's going on around the world and take you a little bit out of your just little box. <laughs> realize something there's a big in the box. Back your, yep, something to keep in the back of your mind. <laughs> yeah. So uh, today, uh, I know uh, we actually uh, shared notes a little bit before the show. And, uh, um, and so I put some of the subjects going across the screen here. And one was about water. And you brought up something that was kind of interesting. Like uh, I've told you, I put a, a backup system on my well. And uh, and yes, you do. And you, you brought up a subject of Ambridge and things like that. So uh, what did you want to share on that again? Well, I think that, you know, a lot of people are, are thinking that, um, you know, I've got a well and I'm, I'm going to be, you know, exempt from any type of interruption in, in service and everything, which is, is partially true and everything and, and like in the area where we, where we live uh you're down in part of the the ranch that has mostly wells and i'm up here with uh, municipal water service and uh which has been really good has never went out um don't anticipate it going out i mean they back up generators and everything but for those people that are down in uh, the areas that have wells um these are deep wells here most of them are 200 plus feet deep and they <laughs> oh, think well i've got electricity and i've got a generator and I'll be able to pump water. Um, probably not, mainly because most of these uh, 200 foot plus wells require a tremendous amount of amperage to pull that water up 200 feet and they're wired 220 volt. And most generators, even bigger ones, are only set up to supply you with that 110. So, you know, that's a consideration if you do have water like that um do you have the capability to generate that 220 because if you don't you're shut down to pretty much what's in your storage tank if you have a storage tank uh and your pressure tank and most pressure tanks are only a uh, 100 gallons or so and they're they're done at 30 pounds anyway so you're effectively in the same situation as having no electricity um i know a lot of areas and i don't know how around here everybody seems to have pretty good flows and you get over in the valley and some of those other areas and you may have smaller uh, three, four gallon a minute flows and people use a lot of storage tanks in that situation, which is a good thing. Um, the relationship between the storage tank and your pressure tank, storage tank pumps into the pressure tank. So you're going to have water as long as that storage tank is full. Most of them are 3000 gallons. So, I mean, if you're good at it, you got 20 days plus of water there on there. But, um, you know, it's just something to keep in the back of your mind. If, if you have a well, and even the ability to generate electricity you should still have some kind of potable water backup source. Um, I got a couple of 55 gallon barrels down here in the shop. I got them wired with heat tape and everything like that. If for some reason, yeah, you know, we had a, we've had a couple of boil water notices here and everything like that. But um, you know, those of you that are dependent upon that electricity, check it out, see what you've got, you know, and kind of come up with a a plan that if you did lose electricity, um, you know, you're going to be in a situation where you got to figure out how to supply your own self with water. Yeah. I know when we did our well and we're actually like 400 feet deep. Yeah. Deep, <laughs> um, real deep. I had an electrician come in. We put a bypass system in our well so I could put a RV type of plug. I'm just doing that for description on the outside of our, our well. 
So when you go into ours, you have to flip these switches, which bypasses the house. So you don't, if you put a generator on, you're not putting electricity back into the lines. Right. Anyway, so um, um, I'm using a um, uh, 5,000 um, watt um, generator and it puts out 30 amps and that powers my my pumps and everything. Um, so we, and we ran tests. Um, and uh, I only have a, like a 50 gallon holding tank, pressurized tank. So if our power went out, I have water till that's empty. Yeah, until that's empty, <laughs> What's that's empty? pressure drops under. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, uh, then I just got to roll out my generator, hook it up to the side of my, my well. And yes, I could actually power all my water system here on the property. Um, but yeah, it does take a lot of power. I mean, we're still it talking does. about 30 amps. And uh, yeah, 30, uh, it's gonna did, work every bit of 30 amps to, to get that stuff up, you know, from the well. And, and it does, I mean, um, and we ran tests yeah. and the whole works, you know, and, and put a nice. load on it and everything works great. But if I was to put any more things on that generator, I would be in trouble. <laughs> um, but it can yeah, handle the well, yeah, your generator, you know, and um, I mean, just for an example, you know, my wife just you know has chicken water dishes heated water dishes out here and one for the birds and everything else like so don't plug so many of those things in you know and so um she did she had three of them plugged in and everything which was fine but you know sometime during the night they it kicked the breaker here in the house and they froze yeah. all up overnight you know and so we we just pulled one off and that's just you know the chickens would be fine they got they don't need two warm dishes of water one warm dish <laughs> will be fine yeah. Um, you know, but that just kind of, you know, shows you what can actually happen, you know, and people, you know, don't understand. I mean, even from a personal standpoint, you can get dehydrated this time of the year pretty easy because it's like, oh, it's cold. I don't need to drink a lot of water myself, you know, um, yeah. and then whatever your daily requirements are, you know, for, you know, this usage, you got to make sure you're covered there. So sounds like you've got a plan. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we there. buy we buy bottled water too, but um, oh, yeah. I would actually yeah. like to do one or two fifty-five gallon tanks of water, just because things break, and even with the, uh, I mean, uh, depending what it, you know, things could keep us from getting uh, power. Um, right. You know, the generator may not be operable, so uh, I still want to have water um, storage, and which I I just got to get the fifty-five gallons. Now I do have several stacks of. Uh, of bottled water, but <laughs> it's like it goes really fast, and it's not. No, really it does. I mean, I, water. I I think the normal preparation guidelines, you know, like five gallons a person a day. You know, what I mean, if you want to bathe now and then or something like that, and um, you know, you got to be ready for seventy-two hours without this stuff and everything, and then you know that if, if you're ready and you can handle seventy-two hours, that gives you a good forty-eight hours to figure out how you're going to solve the problem if it you know, continues yeah. on past that time frame yeah. like that. I, I highly recommend if next time you go to Costco people's <laughs> is buy the little cases of uh, wet wipes that are for yep. babies. Anyway, yep. and I keep a couple of cases of those around. And if uh, you don't want to use water and you still want to clean up and stuff, uh, those work great. And uh, um, anyway, when you're in a pickle <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you're very, be very happy you had those. Yeah. Um, the other thing I wanted to bring up with you, because we have something in common we did last Friday, is you and I got a chance to meet Senator uh, Lynn um, Finley, which is a um, Republican Senate uh, of the District 30 uh, in yep. our area. And I, I don't want to you know, talk about the politics. We may have talked with him and all that stuff, other than the fact it was a great opportunity. We just went down to a restaurant. He was just kicking that, kicking out. You know, we all got a chance to grab a beer and we and you and I sat right by him so we could hear him really well. And it was really nice. I'm just kind of telling people that, you know, I've never met with any of my representatives before. And uh, so uh, it was a very pleasant experience. And it was really neat to find that he was so like minded with us. And uh, as a leader, I, I um, uh, or Senate representative, uh, I was pretty happy with him. I, I mean, uh, um, you know, of course, he's kind of outnumbered <laughs> when it comes to uh, he's completely you know, the, outnumbered. Yeah, I, I, when it comes to the legislature and all that stuff over in the other side of the mountains. But uh, um, 
you know, that could change the way things are going. People are getting pretty fed up. But uh, um, I do, I guess my point in the whole conversation is take if you have the opportunity to go to a town hall or go to uh, local meetings where senators and uh, leaders want to meet with people, uh, you should try to do your best to do it once or twice and uh, get involved a little bit. I mean, we didn't change the world or anything, but it, I feel a little bit, I don't know, uh, a little bit in touch a little more because, hey, now I know one of our senators. <laughs> it's like kind of cool. Yeah, I thought it was a great opportunity, you know, and I mean, it was, it was a good thing that he, uh, you know, did that. Um, you know, I was disappointed we didn't, uh, excuse me, see any of our county commissioners there or, or anything like that to at least hear him as well. And he is truly outnumbered, you know, I mean, maybe for the listeners out there, Oregon uh, legislature um, is controlled by the Democratic Party with a super majority, which means they don't need, they, they need no Republican uh, votes to pass any kind of legislation. They just need the Republicans to show up and they can slam dunk it right in their face. And that's it over. Everybody goes home. Um, you know, and so that's that's one party rule. Um, and I, I get that's the way it happens, but it's been very detrimental to the state of Oregon. And I think, you know, most of us made it pretty clear to him that we realize there's lots of issues that you're working on out there and everything else. But by far, the effort has to be in restoring a balance of power in this legislature that at least allows, you know, marginalized or outnumbered voices to be heard. Um, and if it gets voted down, it does. But, you know, so that's kind of the bigger overall type of a picture. And sometimes, you know, they get a little wrapped up in the minutia and the detail of this thing. And that's not going to cause us the problems right now. <laughs> it's, it's the problems that we've got that got to be solved. Um, you know, simply because it, the balance of power is what it's all about. It, it absolutely needs to be restored in this state. It's It's been this way off and on, um, you know, for a long time, heavily, you know, uh, pretty much controlled by one party for the last 30 years. And yeah. if, you know, if your way is good and you've been in control in the last 30 years, um, we, we got some problems there that need to be straightened out. <laughs> Big time. It's so, it's so out of whack, but yeah. I, yeah, I, he, I, I, he but, did make know, a couple I, of statements. Start somewhere. There. Yeah. I'm sorry. And he made a couple of statements that I, I'm going to follow up on and I'm, you know, he said some things are going to happen and this is how we were going to do some things. And so I'm going to see if those happen. And, you know, I'll, if they do, I'll email him and thank him. And if they don't, I'll email him and ask him why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, uh, anyway, I, I, I just wanted to pass it along. You know, I kind of preach it a little bit when I'm doing my shows, but uh, I, I want to kind of let people know that if I'm mentioning it, that we need to be involved a little bit, uh, you know, a whole lot or a little all of it counts. And so you Absolutely. and I took the time to go meet our senator. And it was pretty, pretty nice experience, actually. Um, it was a frustrating. I expect, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I fully expect hopefully they'll show up again, you know, and, and at least get our input. But I mean, it was nice to, you know, meet the guy and, and you know, exchange ideas and views and, and, and that type of thing. And then, you know, walk out of there with some email addresses and phone numbers and, you know, and, and as part of the engagement, you know, what's the follow up going to be? How are we going to, you know, move on from here and change these things? Um, and so there again, I believe in holding people accountable for something like that. And I'll, I'll hold him accountable for what we talked about. Yeah, it was kind of interesting uh, when you have sh uh, something like that, too. In your local areas, you kind of get a chance to meet some of the I I'm going to use the word movers and shakers people that uh, do get involved in stuff like us. We have the Crooked River Ranch and we have people that either have media or have, uh, uh, I think one guy I was sitting next to was involved in the uh, uh, road. Uh, making yeah, that was, that was Sue House. She was the, yeah, the chairman so, of the Special Roads District who administers yeah. our roads in conjunction with the ranch here. And so, I yeah. mean. And by um, the way, I got to you know, tip, my, tip my hat to her because you know, I'm kind of new to the area. I'm not actually new, but I'm new lately. And uh, so I'm whispering, who's that? Who's that? <laughs> so yeah, she's yeah. telling me who everybody was, and she was great. Well, uh, she, you know, know, she was virtually the only, you know, elected official that showed up. Um, you know, we do have a, a slate of officers 
uh, that run, they're on the board of directors of, of our HOA. And regardless of your political persuasion, uh, if a local senator that represents your district is here, I think some of them should have been there. There's nine of them, which is too many to sure. begin with and everything. So out of nine, I mean, three of you guys or persons could have showed up, you know, down there at least to say that you're listening uh, to the politicians or giving them your input. I mean, there's 5,000 yeah. people out here and you're the ones that are supposed to be helping us out on these things. Yeah. So it was a, um, uh, it was a good thing and I'm, I'm glad I went. And so uh, hopefully us by telling people we went to something new, um, not you've done this before, but that was completely new to me and it was a great experience and I want to make sure and pass that on. So, uh, yes, yeah. Um, so, uh, what's our other thing? Here? Oh, so the other thing you brought up and I, I agree it should be talked about, but, uh, I think a lot of reality and maybe some people didn't even notice it, but, uh, AWS, which is part of Amazon cloud services, uh, they crashed and burned yesterday, and I think they had sporadic thing, things going on this morning, too. Uh, I mean, literally, um, what that means is a lot of companies use AWS servers to store their data up on or, or operate from. Maybe even their software comes from AWS. And so it's and another name for it is cloud services. And uh, that's kind of how... Uh, Parler got shut down because through politics, Amazon came along and says, we're shutting off your AWS servers, whether you deserve it or not. And yep. that to me was abuse of power. But um, but just to give you an idea of how powerful it is when something like that goes down, it crippled uh, banks, it crippled all kinds of institutions, and uh, it, it crippled me and some of my stuff. I sell Range Rob poopy bags through Amazon. So I can't right. check my sales. I can't check anything. And that may also means my, I can't, you know, my stuff sells all over the world. So that means when they're down, I'm not selling Ranger Rob booby bags along with all those other people who are selling stuff. And so uh, uh, it was a real, for some people who really use the internet, a l at least a little bit, it was definitely an eye opener that we're just a little so uh, dependent on the internet that uh, people don't realize just how badly that could cripple us. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, you know, and you're, you're one small cog in a big Amazon wheel out there. I mean, we, you, you couldn't quantify the millions of dollars uh, that were lost on this to the economy. I mean, you know, and particularly with Amazon, such a vertically, you know, integrated system like that, um, everything from retail, it shut their shipping down. So their truck drivers couldn't get loads or anything. Their drivers basically sat for a day because they can't go to any kind of a paper system. It's impossible for them to tie, to do. Um, you know, so you, you look at this thing and it's like, okay, it affected that one particular AWS, you know, cloud servers that you're talking about. Um, it, you know, it could have been completely innocuous. It could have been uh, technical issues. Um, you know, you don't know if it was a DNS attack by somebody or if it was a trial and let's see what we can do um, type of a thing. So, you know, you get start hitting the financial business and everything, which it seemed to stay away from. And they, they are pretty robust in everything, but I mean, people's doorbell, anything that was functioned through Amazon, you know, your ring doorbells and, and basically anything that ran through an Amazon server uh, was down. So people's that type of protection for your home, and everything was off. You, you know, if you had a, a ring, you, you couldn't see your hair. I, I have an Arlo system, but it runs through a different program. And so, you know, you got to understand, you know, and if the banks go down, um, the American people are not real great. They like their debit cards and, and, and credit cards and everything like that. And, and, and cash has really not become that popular anymore. And so people just don't do yeah. it. I mean, I, I know people that have no cash at all. And everything, and so if you, you know, we ended up into a large-scale uh, DNS attack on the financial services, and it brought that system down. Um, you, you go to the store, you're not going to be able to use your debit card. You're not going to be able to put gas in there. You, you know, how long is it going to be down for? Who knows? You know, is yeah. it going to be down 24 hours? Going to be down three or four days? Uh, you know, so you, you really need to make sure that you've got sufficient liquid assets, cash, something along that line. Uh, you know, to support yourself for, you know, 
you know, a month or more <laughs> at times, yeah, uh, right. you know what I mean? Sherry and, and I, even... Sherry and I intentionally put, keep a large sum of money that's out of the bank. So in case yeah. we do have a couple of days where we can't, the machines aren't working, I can still pay cash for fuel or, yep. or get some groceries or and things like that. And the other thing I, 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 I talk about in my videos too is uh, owning assets like silver or gold. Now, gold yep. can be kind of pricey, but you can build your way up to get a pretty good stack of uh, silver. And um, I can tell you one thing about silver, no matter what country you go to with silver, it's recognized. Yeah. So and, I mean, you know, we're really, yeah. in a, really in a pickle. It's, it's there. Um, so but it would be hard to use for transactions for everyday use and stuff. But uh, to have $500,000 hidden away in your, somewhere in your household, um, just in case of that rainy day, it's not like you're losing money. It's like, oh, I'm taking a thousand yeah. out of the bank. I, I'm out of, you know, it's taking money out of my bank. Well, you're not making interest. So well, what's I mean, the difference? Wait, a say, there's no <laughs> checking accounts that pay anything. And, a, a, you yeah, know, so a, you, anything from the bank is like 0.2%. I mean, don't insult me. You know, type of a thing, you know, and I mean, it's like yep. cash is cash. It's not going anywhere. And, he, you know, and people say, well, that's, you know, the dollars being, I, I don't care. But if, if the day comes that paper currency denominated by the U.S. dollar is worth nothing, we got a lot of other bigger problems than, than worrying about. <laughs> that's what that. you want to have this. That's when you want the silver and gold. That's when you want the silver and the gold and everything, you know. And I mean, I do have some precious metals. Uh, but I do have other things in everything that I, I could barter with if I needed to and everything. And that's part of my, you know, whole garden plan. There's a couple of crops that are grown there to use for barter materials and everything that mm -hmm. have a little bit higher value. Um, you know, maybe not exactly mainstream, but, um, you know, I trade that type of stuff with other people and everything. And so, you know, you got something there, but I mean, just to be able to have some, cash there you know and i mean you go to a store three dollar minimum purchase or five dollar minimum purchase with a debit card because they're dinking you for you know eight three percent or something which is fine but you know people just have gotten lazy they've gotten away from that and everything <laughs> like and, watching people like buy espressos and they're only spending like three bucks or stuff and they pull their debit cards out oh yeah like, you don't yeah no five, it's you don't have a five dollar bill in your wallet for goodness sake oh it, it's huge <laughs> business yeah my wife used to run a retail store over in the the valley over there and i mean um you know we it was stores probably doing fifty thousand dollars a month and everything in sales volume our, our credit card uh, costs were three to four thousand dollars a month oh, real significant yeah huge amount i used to own a chain of kite stores and i just used to get so frustrated trying to figure out the fees between the different credit card system, systems you know um you know um mastercard would have a little bit different trend, a gateway yeah. fee than visa did and then american express was different and all that and it's like people don't see that companies are paying a uh, paying extra money or, or losing money from the sale because you're using their credit a credit card and so uh yeah it's uh, um because of our laziness it's actually caused prices to go up a little bit because you're actually also they're pricing their items in their stores to cover their costs of doing the transaction oh, too. no I, I, so, absolutely i mean you know my photos back here on the wall and everything that i i incur a, a cost for that when I purchase the photos. And then if I, uh, you know, if I have to process them with a credit card to our, our provider and everything, we pay a fee there and everything. And believe me, that's baked right into the spreadsheet of the cost and retail price of that, of that product. It has to be and everything, but you know, you multiply that out each day and you see what huge business that that is and everything. And, uh, you know, there again, people just, need to pay attention to and there's you know there's plenty of information out there now as well and people on their investments that are in the stock market and everything you need to be paying attention to that and how you're working that and everything and, that's and a, whole, a lot that's of people a don't even don't even know those that are going on but for example if some if i um people don't realize this sometimes but somebody might come along and say okay i like to buy one of your idaho pasture pigs for 500 bucks like, can i use a credit card and suddenly that really changes the formula because 
um, you know, I have a lot of cost involved in that thing. And then you're going to ask me to run it through, say, my PayPal. I got to right. pay a fee. Of, yeah, you got three and a half. I don't know what the percentage. Uh, three and a half yeah, percent. Three to five percent, something like that. Yeah. So now you're making me lose more money because you're too lazy to get five hundred dollars out of the bank. Right. And so uh, you'll find that that's why farmers and stuff like that will say use cash or, um, you know, uh, when they're doing transactions or when yep. you're going to the farmers. Uh, market and stuff, you tend to see them want to use cash because if you cause them to use a credit card, um, then uh, you're just actually hurting the farmer. And so, yeah, and particularly yeah. In, a, in, a, you know, in a business situation like that, I mean, my experience and, and stuff with some former things I did in my life was it cost you 11 to 15 percent to administrate any kind of a delayed payment process with an invoice or something. And that goes with generating the invoice. Uh, processing and sending it out. I mean, and that used to be back in the paper days, you know, and it's a little easier now and everything, but it, it's still, you know, if I'm, if I got to pay that, I'm, I'm going to recover it. And if, you know, if, if you don't, if you pay me cash, then, you know, you save me a lot of, of money. And so we'll, uh, we'll look at that whole thing. Yeah. yeah. See how it goes. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the realities, I mean, uh, some people may not even notice that some of those services were down last yesterday and today. Um, but, uh, boy, when you look at the big picture, there was a lot of transactions and problems oh. going on because, because a certain part of internet was down. And, uh, so and you never uh, know yeah, where that's going to end up. I mean, that, that I be, know. you know, what, what happens if that gets into the, you know, the management of our, our grid and everything else like that? I mean, it's just, you know, these guys out here doing it, there's some, there's some vicious people and everything and they have no, no you know, however that all works out, out for them and everything. But, um, you know, you shut the banks down and everything and, and it's just, you, you look and it's not a real visible thing in the economy. It's not, it's just part of the overall degradation of the economy as a whole. And that it's just another contributing factor to poor performance. Uh, it's just going to help the numbers look worse at, at the years in which we're coming up on yep. and everything. So, so I uh, actually heard two things that uh, one of them I can remember. Let's see if I remember what the other. Um, you know, um, Australia, they're having a shortage on DEF for diesels. Oh, yeah. So yeah, think, I saw that. Think, think about if that happens over here, how crippling that would be to our trucking industry and anybody that owns a diesel. Because all the new diesels require this new DEF. And uh, yep. anyway, <laughs> uh that's that's a uh, like if well, that you, hits us, it's like that could be a subtle little thing that could really hurt a lot of people, including you know farmers. what that, you know what the deaf fluid originates from, what it's manufactured from. Uh, you said the urea. chemical, but yeah, man, it was something that fertilizer. Short it's on. fertilizer. That's what it is. It's fertilizer yeah. and everything. It's just you know put into that format, and so you're going to watch the price of the deaf fluid follow the price of. Uh, fertilizer right through the roof, you know, this spring. And there again, when stuff starts getting up like that, that would probably have more of a, a, a priority in the manufacturing side of things, but you're going to see the price go up and the new garbage that's on these trucks out there and everything is just, it's unreal. And it's all in response to environmental and government regulations and, and everything like that. And, um, you know, you look at the fact that California is going to mandate all electric trucks by 2030 <laughs> is insane um, yep. and everything. And that'll be another complete, you know, disaster. And it, you know, looks like, you know, we'll be around to see that and everything as to how that goes. Um, you know, and these emissions on these trucks and everything else that's out there. Um, you know, I, I used to own some commercial trucks and everything and um, did some trucking into California and my truck was a 1995 it had quite a newer engine in it and everything but it it was basically illegal to drive into california and, and i took a couple loads of christmas trees down into sacramento and, and finally got caught at a scale there they told me never to come back into california again with that <laughs> truck and it, which was fine with me I, I you know i got away with it i got paid for it and everything yeah. but i mean it was a you know it was a ten thousand 
dollar truck well, is it it worth a lot more now. I just got a good deal on it. But you know, that's why these guys are paying three hundred thousand dollars for a truck and the cost of operating them and the complete inability uh, for most shops to work on them. They they uh, you see some of the larger shops. We were over in uh, Medford back in August uh, along I five there. And the shops there are just packed because they're the only ones that can work on these trucks. You know, these trucks yeah. go down, these guys end up sitting for two or three days. Your wheels don't turn, you don't make any money. Okay, um, another subject you brought up that I want to make sure we don't miss is uh, you were talking about heating sources a little bit and some of the things that we probably should at least comment on. And, and uh, uh, especially with this time of year, uh, um, where do you want to go with that? Well, basically, you know, it's just depending on what situation I think that you're in, uh, you know, in, in your own situation. Okay, I'm at our situation here, we're all electric heat pump type of a thing. Very efficient, works good. There again, we've had great, you know, reliability in our grid system here. Uh, we do have good infrastructure as far as the system goes. We don't have a lot of the problems they do in some of the areas of California. They're more heavily forested with stuff taking it out but you know we have lost power here for a period of time and so it uh hi jack good evening to you too see that there um hey jack so you're in a situation basically you know and i i thought we're fine we can roll the dice and then i you know i kind of got to looking back and i go i remember some zero and three degree days here you know last yeah. winter and i thought what the hell would i do if my heat went out in this kind of weather and everything and and I thought, well, I'm, I thought, okay, well, I'll do something. Well, I looked around. There's nothing I had that I was going to make that up with. I got generators. And there again, you know, if I got into that situation, do I heat my house with a generator? Do I keep my freezer going with a generator? I'd have more generators around here than I would know what to do with in order to keep everything going. And so I basically um, went down and I got one of the catalytic heaters, the two of the smaller catalytic heaters. They're capable of heating 2,000 square feet um, off of propane and everything. And while it's not a perfect situation because I would have to kind of leave the door cracked to get the hose in from the big tank outside, and that kind of compromises my security a little bit, even though I could adjust my alarm system to react to that. Um, I would at least be able to heat my house at a level that's going to keep the thing from freezing up and, and us able to survive. And the analogy here is you look a lot of the people that are living off grid up in Alaska and the heavy bushcraft types of individuals, um, you know, they'll have their house there and everything. And generally it's always wood heat and everything, but then they usually have a secondary structure around there somewhere, be it an elk tent of some kind or another small building, because when your primary structure burns down, and it's 50 degrees below zero out there, you got to have some place to go. And so, you know, it's a redundancy in systems and everything. And so basically that's what I would encourage people to look at. And I believe you have got pellet heat. Probably did I see a pellet stove coming out yep. the side of your house on one of the videos. So, you know, as long as you can, you know, have a mechanism to keep that thing running and a lot of those newer stoves do, you're going to be in good shape. And, you know, biomass heating, you know, as far as I'm concerned, is the best you can go. I mean, wood pellets is good. Um, you know, obviously, I, I'm getting old. I have no desire to go out and split wood or anything else. Me neither. <laughs> and everything. And I, I really don't have a desire to have somebody deliver it here or anything else like that. But, I mean, still, you know, biomass is still pretty good. And so, basically, you know, I looked at my situation. I brought those two heaters in. I, you know, our local Bimart store had those uh, 15 gallon propane containers on sale. So I bought a couple of them, went down, had them filled out. Um, you know, there again, I'm just trying to get 72 hours worth of stability and heat yep. there. And I've got 72 plus, you know, with that particular setup there. And then I'll figure out how I'm either going to resupply or, or whatever if, if my electrical grid doesn't come back up. You know, I look at that electrical bill today, just got it $256 a month. Not, not a big deal. That's not too bad you know, yeah. for, for what I'm doing and everything. So some type of an alternative heat source and everything people really need to, to think about having because when it's 10 degrees out, your house gets cold fast. Yeah, that's kind of like, I, I for extreme, I have two Mr. Heaters. Yeah. Um, 
Miss M. But what the other thing is, I told you I had one generator for the well. I bought another 2,000 watt generator to put just outside our our back area to run an extension cord to our pellet stove. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and they don't burn a whole lot of fuel. You can keep them. I think one tank will run for seven hours. I keep yeah. over 80, uh, 80 gallons of, of fuel in our shop. And uh, so my my plan short term in a sense is if we lost power for 72 hours to a week, uh, we can still heat the house with the pellet stove with yeah. our generator. And uh, um, in extreme situations, if I had to, and I would call it extreme if I have to use my Mr. Heaters. <laughs> and those you have to be really careful with. Um, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, um, so there's really two big questions I always want, like people to ask is, one is, can you boil water? And in, in the, in, I, I brought this up before, as I remember in Texas, uh, they were interviewing somebody and they were telling them that they had no water and stuff during their storm and said, you know, grab snow, boil it and, and stuff. And there was people saying, well, how do you boil water? He's like, are you kidding no, me? That doesn't surprise me at all. I mean, yeah, that's, so, you know, uh, people are looking at know, stuff like insane. that. And I, so, I inventoried some stuff today and I, I have those uh, big cooker, a couple of those big cooker things and everything yeah. like, and I, and I got a propane barbecue. So, I mean, people, you ought yeah. to have a big pot and be able to throw it on your exactly. barbecue. That's like a I have a barbecue issue. that's like, propane. I bought a couple of cases of the green, um, uh, propane canisters and i have them right. for one the mr heaters two is uh i you know you guys see i use a traeger where those are electric i have yep. a smaller grill that i can still cook um and boil water in that um along with um if you guys anybody out there does any camping i can't believe anybody wouldn't have a coleman stove and uh you know, the old days you had the white gas thing, yep. <laughs> but nowadays you just use a little green canisters and those are so nice well, I, I have actually two of those because we used to camp a lot. So I keep, uh, you know, a good uh, at least two cases. I'm talking cases mm -hmm. of those propane things around just so I can boil water and cook. And uh, uh, so, yeah, I mean, just, I just ask yourself the question, can you boil water and can you provide yourself with safe, safe? I want to make sure we use the word safe he heating source. Uh, if you're in cold weather and you have no electricity, what what are some things like, um, you know, maybe you ought to invest in a kerosene stove, a uh, kerosene heater. Uh, a lot of people, you can use those indoors with a minimal amount of uh, aeration, but you need it. Right. Um, but there's a lot of things you, you could do that's f affordable to uh, at least heat one room. Um, and, yeah, that's uh, the main thing is be able to, if you have to cycle down into one room, or something like that, at least you're going to be able to, uh, um, you know, there's another good comment there too, um, on it that, uh, you know, these will heat a thousand square feet and you can run, run them quite along. And so, I mean, I can shut my house down, get down to a thousand square feet real quick, like, and everything. And, uh, you know, being able to boil the water. I mean, you know, I, I hauled the thing, the bigger tanks up on the back deck. I mean, I, you know, I thought, well, I'll leave them down down the shop or something no I, i'm i'm here they're right here if i've got to go to them i am on them and i'm back in service in, in less than a few minutes and everything i'm you know i'm not going to screw around with leaving stuff in storage it's going to be right where i need it right now you know i've got generators stored under the back deck right now that can come out and be fired up in less than a few minutes with the cords right there with them um, i got the roll of tape to seal the doors back up and and all this and and so just making sure that the schematics and and the hoops you have to jump through on all this stuff is easy and, and there it's easier to think about it ahead of time than trying to patch something together in a moment of need yeah i mean if it's five degrees out here which it does get to oh, yeah. uh, i don't want to be dawdling around outside very long <laughs> now the other thing i do now i don't know you you might get a kick out of this but you know, I have a steel shop. My shop's all steel, right? Yep, so I keep too. my generators in my 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 shop. And so part of that thinking is, because they're on wheels anyway, um, is would my shop work at all like a, a Faraday cage? 
Yeah, I, I would think so. I mean, because you know, all any... that metals, you know, it's you know, it's grounded. Um, in fact, yeah. everything's got to be grounded because I have electric in there. And they've grounded the building. So yeah, mine mine is completely metal. It's you know, right now it's sitting yeah. on packed compacted gravel. I need to, you know, pour some concrete in there, and everything. But I mean, I think anything, you know, if we got that EMP, that it's gonna, you know, some of this. I mean, the generators I have, they're they're just basic generators. Fire them up and run. Um, they're you know they're lick or they're air cooled, thirty five hundred watts and everything. And I mean, um, being around that type of stuff and using that type of stuff, I would love nothing better. Again, I think we talked about this one other time of, of having that ten to fifteen thousand watt diesel cooled liquid cooled <laughs> generator that'll sit there and run for two weeks type of thing because i mean a gas generator um you know basically you run that thing you gotta you gotta change oil in about 150 hours you know on yeah. an air cool those are those are a pretty crude engine um you know and they eat the oil up real quick like and so you gotta have, kind of have that in the back of the plans and so you know i store a couple gallons of oil just so you know and plenty of oil um got a little worried about uh, oil and stuff uh, filters and everything here a while back so bought up enough of that stuff to uh, keep the uh, pickup and the car and the tractor service probably for the next two years and everything on there uh, so you know just, i mean there's one thing after another one thing begets another in this <laughs> whole chain reaction it, it is you know and it's like what rabbit hole are we going to go down today on all this stuff and everything <laughs> and, and i just you know I, I go around here oh yeah i'm prepared you know and then um, you know, and I, I guess, and this is kind of an interesting concept a lot of people could use, that I, I was a firefighter paramedic for a number of years and everything and was up, you know, in the lower middle command levels. And we would run simulations, tabletop simulations on particular situations. And so we would sit down and this was usually from adjoining fire districts or something else like that because mutual aid is so important as it is out here on the ranch and everything else and say, okay, you have a working structure fire, um, you know, that is required. It's a second alarm type of thing. It's going to require up to 10 fire engines and, and the associated stuff with it. And you're, you know, you're prosecuting or you're trying to put this thing out. And then somebody would walk around the table with a little box and it had a bunch of little cards with other scenarios written on it. And one of them would be at the same time you're pulling this fire and you reach into this box and you pull this thing out. And it goes, yeah, a 66 passenger bus just overturned on the highway uh, eight miles from your incident right now. Uh, it's a mass casualty incident. We have uh, two confirmed dead, eight, uh, you know, serious or eight, 12, 15 people seriously injured. And oh, yeah, the bus is off the side of the road in a creek and, and everything. And so. Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do type of thing, you what know, are and, you going yeah, to do? <laughs> and, and so that, you know, and that was just one of the scenarios. There was plenty of others in, in yeah. there, you know, and everything. But I mean, it was just like throwing a monkey wrench into everything you're doing. And it really forced you to look at alternatives on just about everything that you're doing. And, you know, and you look at this thing and you decide what level you want to be prepared for. And you have to set that level and then get to that level. And then if you exceed that level, you got a little bit of cushion to figure it out, but you know, with me, I'm always like, what could possibly happen next? And in our business, we do the same thing. We'd sit down, you know, in October of the year and say, what's the worst possible thing that could happen to our business this next year? And it was just like, don't hold back. Just what is the worst possible thing? And it, you know, if it, <laughs> you had to figure something out, you know, so. You know, it may not have been exactly, but at least you got you into that mindset of looking at redundant systems and alternative processes to, to whichever particular way you were going at, at this time and everything, yeah. rather than having a real narrow mindset. Because if you got to get out of that narrow mindset at the time of, of extreme need, you're going to make the wrong decisions. That would have. Uh... That would make a good board game for preppers. <laughs> oh, it, it'd be hilarious. I mean, oh, yeah, yeah. some of the stuff that, you know, and I, I, I was in charge of setting up some of the, you know, the add-on problems and everything like that. I mean, you get into that, then, you know, all, all of a sudden, what if you, you know, you get another fire somewhere or a mass casualty 
incident or you know just some crazy stuff that's going to demand a lot of resources you're not going to have suitable resources you know publicly uh safeties and everything coming to handle that so you know what's your own personal type of plan so you know you get into this thing and it's like what's the worst possible thing that could happen to me over the winter as far as loss of energy loss of food or anything else like that and then make sure that your your plan for that um you know i saw a couple of things on the, the various outlets today and everything says so, oh, there's getting to be some shortages here in the store I, yeah, I haven't been to the store for a couple of weeks, so I don't know. Maybe I should <laughs> I don't go see. Out. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I, I, you know, it's like, well, I haven't been out to the store because, you know, I kind of run on a little blitz here a while back. But, you know, maybe I better do because I, I don't back off. I just keep adding to to it type right. of thing. And, By the way, if you ever go to chance to go to Bymart, they've got the Idaho, uh, the Idaho um, uh, potatoes. potatoes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 80, uh, about 80 the- set. 87 cents a, a bag. So every time I go there, I oh, yeah. always buy two, three or four of those and just keep putting them in the preps. Yeah, it's no, like, that's one oh. of the best. That's one of the best deals out there. I saw that on that ad that yeah. just came out and yeah, everything. Yeah. So I, I bought some more. Yeah, so no, I Fridays are usually run the usually run the town day, and I saw that, and you know, and, and we'll go ahead and, and pull up on, on on some more of that because it was just like. You know, Diane, my wife, was just like, it's nice not to have to run to the store. I mean, we'll go in and, you know, get milk once a week or something like that and everything. But, I mean, if it's there and it's reasonably priced, I'm, I'm bringing some home. Yeah. So um, we get, we're we about nine, eight minutes out. But uh, I wanted to bring up one uh, thing is uh, I don't want to tell the whole story behind this, but I uh, had the opportunity um, with a, a mission involved to go visit. Uh, houses near my house um, that I've just never met. And so, um, because I just wanted to communicate some things and making sure that, um, you know, uh, some of the things we're doing on our property uh, was okay with everybody. And and so um, my point to this whole conversation is taking the, um, I took the time and didn't kind of realize that it was, you know, uh, such a success to meet my community or meet my neighborhood and of course yep. we're, if people understand where we live we're you know five five to two acre lots difference between everybody's houses around here um and uh so you know, sometimes i mean you there may be houses packed away in five acres you, you didn't even know there's a house back there but um what i learned is really what i want to talk about <clears throat> and so i went down the road to a corner that um uh, the new fence I put on um, is next to his, and I was, and uh, stopped to see him, and and we got to talking. Super nice guy, and I said, "Well, we're kind of patriots over here. We're kind of, you know, all that." And he's laughing. He goes, "I was just unpacking a case of patriot supplies when you came up." <laughs> I'm going, "Yes." So it's like, turns out I've got a a, a like-minded neighbor just down the road that I had no idea. Well, then yep. um, so we talked for a long time, kind of swapped notes and all that. Well, I had to go visit another one just to make sure I had a chance. And once again, the point is, is um, I, I met this other guy, same way, young person, this, um, single. He didn't, he's not married, didn't have anybody living with him. He's on five acres. Uh, got to talking to him, find out we're very like-minded. He has a lot of gardening things he's doing. And then I've met the other ones too. I And, and I find out that all my neighbors are, like-minded and it, it turned out to be very pleasant and so uh i would have had no idea and so uh i highly recommend if you guys if nobody's actually gone around no matter where you live and kind of meet some of the people you'll find some you don't like you'll, you'll clash um and that's that's okay but at least you understand where they're coming from <clears throat> go by yourself like go to buy mart <laughs> go buy yourself six or seven or eight boxes of whitman's candy and then take it home. Yeah. And then for those neighbors, you just never had a chance or found a good excuse to say hello to and meet them. Take a box of Whitman's candies with you and just say, hey, you know, we've never met. Thought I'd bring you a box of Whitman's candy. My name's such and such. Here's my phone number if there's any issues you want to talk to me about. And meet them. And 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 really, community is really going to be important. And I'm finding out I've got at least two households near us that are really into gardening and stuff. Well, 
the cool thing is, so am I. Well, if they're really doing a lot of corn, then maybe I'll do a lot of tomatoes and maybe we can do some swapping. And if we ever had a crisis, we could help each other. <laughs> and so um, that's what I'm discovering. And and so that's how we used to do things in the old days. Everybody knew each other. And, yep. and you know, um, and we, you and I, I think we're joking. I don't know who I was talking to where, you know, sometimes the neighbor uh, had permission to scold your kid because, you know, we'd go over and spend the whole day over at Billy's house, you know, and, yeah, and so yeah. everybody was close. And it's like, uh, you know, uh, life was a lot different back then. And so now we don't hardly know our neighbors at all and stuff. And so uh, um, what a great excuse. Get yourself, especially with Christmas here, get yourself some box of candies. Yep. Go meet some of your neighbors and say hello and, and, and you know, find out if you, you might find out they have some kids that are doing things you know, um, that are, uh, are doing some good things. You find out, you know, more about any freaks in your area too. <laughs> Well, yeah, that right, that right there is is worth the whole price of it alone. I mean, you can make that determination pretty quick. I know the area we used to live over in the valley, and everything. we'd lived there all our life. But I mean, neighborhoods change, and there are those individuals around, uh, you know, that may not have the best intentions and, and the best types of behaviors. And we had some in that neighborhood, and uh, you know, there's guys older than me down there. Um, and everything in the neighborhood, but I'd known them. We all had each other on, you know, text and phones and everything else like that. Uh, there's a couple of young stay at home moms there and everything, you know, that we knew and everything. And I, I told them, I says, here's our phone numbers and our text. I says, you know, when you need to share, if he's only, you know, minutes away, you know, or hours type of thing. And sure enough, she, she had some undesirable start hassling her right in her front yard, you know, and she sent a text out and before she knew it, there's four old gray haired guys standing there in her driveway, you know, sending these guys on their way and everything. And so that, you know, that worked out great right. in, in those yeah. situations there. And it's the same way, you know, I mean, I, I know a couple of my neighbors, well, three, all three of them on the one side and everything. The other ones, he's a little different. So I don't, I don't know how that one will go. Um, but there again, got them on, uh, you know, we're, we're have each other's phone numbers and everything else like that. And, you know, a couple of them were like, well, if there's any trouble, you know, we'll be here a lot faster than anybody else, you know, type yeah. of thing. And, um, you know, the other two neighbors on the other side there, you know, they kind of roll with the flow. They do like, I keep their gray digger population reduced, uh, all summer long out here and everything. Cause that's, I, we just have a tremendous amount of them up here. Um, but yeah, getting to know your neighbors and having that sense of community, you know what I mean? That was one of the things, you know, that I kind of worried about here is I, you know, how am I going to resupply my, uh, my water, you know, cause I, I, I obviously I, I have, you know, the the municipal system here and everything. And I'm, you know, I'm thinking, oh God, if I got to go down to the Deschutes and pump it out of the Deschutes river and everything else, you know, and we've got and any kind of filter it and all that stuff, problems, yeah. you know, we got to filter it. We got to watch out for marauders or pirates down there and everything in those types of situations. So I may have found a solution and everything yeah, to that Ranger right Rob. there. <laughs> exactly. I, I'm going to bring Ranger Rob some good stuff, you know, to fill right. my barrels like, and, yeah. and, and everything. And that's just how I that, ask that, you, that, it's going to cost you like five bullets. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, no problem there. You know what I mean? It's just, there's an old guy around the corner, you know, he's a, he's a nice guy and everything. And obviously he's older than us and everything. And I, I pop in there, you know, a couple of times a month and stick two dozen eggs on his porch or hand them to him. You know, guy thinks that's yeah. the greatest thing in the world. And he gives me zucchini and all it, it's great. That's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, how it has anyway, to we need to, we got to wrap things up again. Our hour goes really fast. Yeah. Wow. Just blew so, fast. Uh, anybody who's watching, by the way, I want to let you know, if you ever want to be on our show, just contact us and, and give us an idea what you'd like to talk about. But um, you don't have to have any fancy software as long as we can get a microphone in your face and a camera. Uh, we The software we have does all the work. It's kind of like Zoom, but easier. Uh, so if you ever want to be on our show, let us know. And if you're on Crooked River Ranch, would like to be on our show. Um, or if you're on Crooked River Ranch and you have some subjects we'd like to talk about, uh, please notify us and let us know. So we got to wrap this up because we tried to stay within an hour realm. So I want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, and uh, Dale, thank you so much for being with us. Thank and, you, Ray, uh, We'll see everybody next week. So take care, guys. 
Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.